Bambi Story, A Life in the Woods One day a deer was born. His name was Bambi, his mother washed him all over with her tongue. Bambi, she said. My little Bambi, the young Bambi was curious about everything. He learned he was a deer, and so was his mother. He learned there are other deer in the forest, and someday he would meet them. He learned the trails his mother followed were made by the deer. Bugs and critters, sounds and smells. So many wonders to explore. Sometimes on a trail, suddenly his mother would stop still. She would open her ears wide and listen from all directions. First over there, then here, Bambi would wait. At last, when she said, it's all right. There's no danger. We can go, then the two of them would start on the trail again. But he did not know why they had to do this. One day, his mother took him to the meadow for the first time. He started to run out to the open clearing but she jumped right in front of him. Stop. Said she. Stay here, I must go out first. Wait till I call for you. But if I start to run, you must turn around and run back into the woods very fast. Do not stop. Do you understand me? Bambi's mother slowly stepped out into the open meadow. She sniffed all around. She looked this way and that, alert and carefully. After a while she said, it's fine, Bambi. Nothing to worry about. Come on. He bounded out to meet her. Oh, what a bright sun. Back in the woods, Bambi had seen a stray sunbeam every now and then. But here the hot bright sun warmed him all over. He felt marvelous and jumped high into the air. Each time he landed on grass softer than any grass he had ever felt. Then he leapt back up again, over and over. In some places the flowers were so thick, they made a sweet carpet. But what was that tiny thing dancing in the air? Look, mother, said Bambi. The flower is flying. Why? That flower must have needed to dance so much, Bambi thought that it broke right off its stem to rise up and dance in the air. That's not a flower, Bambi, said the mother, it's a butterfly. Then, on a rock was a young hare, a rabbit, thumping its foot. Hello, there, smiled hare, raising one tall ear. Want to play? Sure, said Bambi. Catch me, hare hopped off the rock into the grass, hop hopping away. Bambi was a bit faster at running and jumping, but Hare was better at hiding, so the two of them had a fine time. On top of the flowers, a tall, fluffy black and white tail was sliding over to them. Why? I'd know that tail anywhere, said Hare. It's my friend Skunk, he's under the flowers. Skunk? And sure enough, a black and white head popped up. This is Bambi, said Hare. Soon the three of them were exploring the meadow, sniffing its rich deep smells. After a while, Hare and Skunk had to go home. Bambi looked around. Mother, where are you? At the far side of the meadow he saw her, with a creature that looked just like her. Bambi, come meet my sister Ina, called Bambi's mother, and her two little ones. Bambi hopped over, two fawns, little Feline and her brother Gobo, were running in and out of their mother's legs. Feline gave a leap and landed right in front of Bambi, then jumped back to Gobo. With care, Bambi stepped up to her. Feline hopped off to one side and Gobo followed. Soon the three of them were chasing each other up and down the grass. Now run off and play, all of you, said Bambi's mother. Every day after that, the three young deer played and chattered. They raced and chased, they nibbled many strawberries and blueberries on the bushes, and sometimes they just talked. One day, Bambi said, Do you know what danger means? Something very bad, whispered Gobo. But what is it? said Bambi. I know what danger is, said Feline. It's what you run away from. But soon they were chasing and playing again. Bambi's mother and Ina came up. Come on now, they said. It's time to go home. Far off at the top of a hill two large proud deer came into view, with enormous heads of antlers. Turning to them, Feline said, Who are they? Those are your fathers, said Ina. If you are smart and don't run into danger, said Bambi's mother to her son, someday you will grow up as big and handsome as your father. And you will have antlers, too. Bambi's heart swelled with pride. 
As Bambi grew, he learned how to sniff the air. He could tell if his friend Hare was coming, or if a fox had just trotted by. He could tell if it would rain soon. One afternoon came a raging storm. Lightning flashed and thunder crashed. Bambi thought the end of the world had come. But when he lay by his mother's side, he felt safe. One day when Bambi wandered about in the woods, he came upon a sharp, unpleasant smell. Curious, he followed it. It led to a clearing, where stood a strange creature. He had never seen such a creature. It stood up on its rear legs, and in its two arms it held something long and black. Could it be a third leg? In a flash, Bambi's mother rushed up to him. Run, Bambi, run. As fast as you can. Bambi's mother bounded over shrubs and bushes. He kept pace beside her till they were back at their leafy home. Later, Bambi's mother said, Did you see the human? Bambi nodded yes. That's the one who brings danger, she said. And both of them shuddered. Bambi was still growing. The first time he woke to find his mother gone from his side, he was scared. It was early morning and still dark. Mother, mother, he called out. A large shadow approached, bigger than his mother's. Standing before a pool of moonlight, a great old buck looked proud and stern. Who are you calling? Said the buck with a frown. Can't you take care of yourself? Bambi did not dare answer. He lowered his head in shame. Look up, said the old buck. Listen to me. Watch. Smell. Find out for yourself. You will be fine on your own. The leaves fell and Bambi grew even taller. His mother started leaving him alone more and more, letting him meet other deer and creatures of the forest. Feline, Gobo, Hare and Skunk were still Bambi's best friends, but he also found other creatures fascinating to watch and sometimes fun to play with. One wet winter day, the terrible smell of humans swept across the forest. The scent was so strong that there had to be many humans in a group. Most animals quickly fled out of danger, but some were not as lucky. With the hunter's loud noise and great power, many animals were killed and one of them was Bambi's mother. After that terrible day, Bambi felt lost. He wandered about. How could this awful thing have happened? Suddenly, the great old buck stepped out in front of him. Were you out in the meadow when it happened? The old buck said. Yes, said Bambi. And you're not calling for your mother, said the buck. Suddenly Bambi felt full of courage. I can take care of myself, he said, looking up. The great old buck smiled. Listen to me, he said. Smell. Watch. Learn to live and be careful. Find out for yourself. Now farewell. And he vanished into the deep forest. Winter came. Strong and bitter cold winds swept through the woods. Deep snow covered the forest floor. There was little food to eat. Bambi felt hungry and cold all the time. Nearly all the bark on the trees had been peeled away by hungry deer. Still, the cold wind blistered on. One day a flock of crows flew overhead, yelling loudly. Ka! Ka! The geese also screamed in the sky. Gawk! Gawk! They warned of the humans coming. Again. Hare hopped up and down in alarm. We're surrounded. They are everywhere. A single boom crashed like thunder, and one goose fell from the sky. All the animals ran like mad, even the tiny titmouse. Another short crash like thunder, and a fox fell down on the forest floor. Hare called out to Bambi. We have to get out of here. Bambi and Hare started to bound away. But was that Gobo, lying in the snow? Gobo, said Bambi. Where is your mother and Feline? I fell down, said Gobo. I'm too weak. You go on, Bambi. Another young deer bounded by. Bambi, run. Don't just stand there if you can run. He took off like the wind, and as Bambi ran along, he called behind him. I will come back for you. Gobo. Bambi ran and ran. Soon the sound that boomed as loud as thunder grew more and more distant. When Bambi returned to where Gobo had been, there was no trace of him, not even his tracks. Just big tracks. Feline and her mother were pacing around the spot. What has become of him? Wailed Ina. But they all knew. They could smell it. A human had come and had taken Gobo away. Thank you for watching.
The next part will coming soon. The end.